Hello, and welcome to our final installment of our midweek video lessons. It's very exciting to be able to talk about the greatest commandment. Of course, this is the most appropriate uh, as we head, in, head into Holy Week. Uh, so let's talk about the greatest commandment. Here we are on my computer, and we will go to slideshow and play. Uh, just real quick, before we get too far into what is the greatest commandment, uh, I want to backtrack and just talk about the week that is coming up. This Sunday, uh, as you may know, is Palm Sunday. Very exciting time. It's when we welcome Jesus into Jerusalem. It's the long-awaited uh, King, the Messiah. He has finally come. So it is a day full of emotion as we are extremely excited, it's, a, it's like a festival, but we're also aware that he is riding on to die. And so it is, it's, a, it's a bittersweet uh, day, but that's this upcoming Sunday. Then Maundy Thursday, of course, happens next Thursday. And uh, that is the day, Maundy Thursday is from the Latin word mandatum, mandatory is where we get that word. Uh, it means command. Uh, so Maundy Thursday is the night we celebrate uh, a number of things. Truthfully, uh, I always look at Maundy Thursday as like the busiest liturgy of the year. Uh, we start out with the biggest, the, the final uh, forgiveness that we uh, have waited for since Ash Wednesday. Uh, so everybody comes up and they get their forgiveness, you know, as they've been penitent throughout all of Lent. And also why Monday, Thursday is important is because it is officially the end of Lent. And uh, the color of the day is red, symbolizing the passion of Jesus, the fact that he is going to be betrayed and arrested that night. We also commemorate on this day the Last Supper and mostly the institution of what Jesus commanded his followers to do, that is to uh, do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. That is the Eucharist or the Holy Supper or uh, Holy Communion. And he says this so that we can be part of, with him. It is the ultimate reconciliation. But what is the greatest commandment? Like, what is this idea of mandatum Thursday? Jesus says, after he washes the feet of his disciples, he says this. After he had washed his feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you not know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done for you to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So that is what Jesus is doing here, is giving us the great command, love one another as I have loved you, uh, right after he washes their feet. Okay, so that's Monday, Thursday. This is just kind of Holy Week in general. And then, of course, Good Friday is the day Jesus dies on the cross. Uh, typically, we mourn Jesus 
at three o'clock on that day. That is the traditional hour he died. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a very emotional day as well. So this is Holy Week all in all. Okay, we have Palm Sunday. Then we have Maundy Thursday, right, with the Lord's Supper and the Great Commandment. Then we have Good Friday, the day on which Jesus is crucified and laid in the tomb, which we also commemorate on Holy Saturday, the day after Good Friday. Uh, what's interesting, though, is that on the evening of Holy Saturday, something very, very exciting happens. Some traditions have what is called an Easter vigil, and it is the time when the church is vigilant, uh, watching, uh, because they know in the night that um, Jesus will pass over, right? Because this day is considered the, the Passover, the time when uh, the Jews were freed from Egypt. It is the Passover between death and to life, right? And that's why Easter is so such a big deal, because we celebrate Christ risen. And, of course, Easter is the biggest day of the year. It is the most festival. Uh, it is the most festival uh, celebration. It is just wonderful. Uh, so that is Holy Week. But let's get focused here on the greatest commandment. Um, again, what is Maundy Thursday's theme? So here we are. We see Jesus washing Peter's feet. Now, I just read the second portion of this, but let's read the first uh, portion. This comes from John. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into his heart, into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. At this time, we'll watch this video. Uh, this is another example of... Um, the same commandment that Jesus gives. Uh, we just read the testimony according to John's gospel, but this will be according to Matthew's gospel. And I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Which is the first commandment of all? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Master, thou hast said the truth. There is 
one God, and none other but He, and to love Him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love His neighbor as Himself, is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. Oh, so sorry, that was from Mark's gospel. Uh, so there we have that. Pretty self-explanatory. We have to take a step back and think about uh, you know, why Jesus was asked, um, kind of in the first place, what is the greatest commandment of all? Or why, why did he feel the need to even, uh, uh, give it in the first place? Well, the backstory here is that, of course, we will recall that the Ten Commandments were given. Um, if I had my confirmation class, I'd ask them what they are right here. They, they know them by heart. Uh, of course, the first three are about God and, uh, the fourth through 10th commandment are all about how we treat our neighbor, right? Um, and these, of course, were given to Moses from God, right, to share with people, and they were to follow them. Jesus comes along, right? And these are the established Jewish leaders. Um, this is, these people follow the commandments, as do these. These are also Jews, right? All, you know, Jesus was a Jew and, you know, all of these people. Um, but these were the religious leaders, the priests of the day. And Jesus comes along and he says, you're understanding it wrong. You don't fully grasp the 10 commandments. Therefore, you know, let me sum it up for you is what he, he's saying. These are other pictures of uh, what Pharisees and Sadducees uh, the scribes look like. Uh, so all throughout the gospel, you know, you hear them, uh, the authors say, say, you know, uh, the Pharisees and Sadducees. Um, so that's what they would look like. And these were the normal Jewish folk um, or Gentiles sometimes, um, as we see. But the new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. In all honesty, when I first saw this picture, I, I thought, you know, that's so nice that it's shaped in, in, you know, like a heart. But really, you can't just give the crust to a kid. Like, come on now. How is that helping him out? Uh, but, of course, you understand what is happening. Uh, really, faith is dead without works. Uh, that's what it says in, I believe, James, the letter... Uh, in the Bible, uh, according to James, uh, you know, faith without works is dead. In other words, unless we do things for others, unless we help others and love one another as God has first loved us, we will not have faith. And that's not to say that you need to do those things in order to have faith or be saved uh but one who does those things is saved does that make sense so it's kind of like um uh does a christian need to you know give to the poor help out the homeless or whatever whatever um in order to merit or earn salvation of course the answer is no right however does a Christian do that? Do we see Christians do that? Yes. And so it is, it's a, it's a good deeds are like a byproduct of, of what happens when you have faith. And uh, I love this verse that of course ends the John reading on Monday, Thursday, uh, you know, by this meaning by doing good things for other people, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. 
So that's really the mark of a Christian. Um, now, for the rest of the time here, we will look at how do we do this? And I figured instead of me talking the whole time, because uh, that kind of turned out to be like a lecture, I figured we'd have an oldie but a goodie come in and uh, have Veggie Tales tell us how it is. Oh, we have it right here. I've had a Glowforge for about six months Ooh. now. I set it up. On and this will finish out our video. Feel free to sing along. If you like to talk to tomatoes, if a squash can make you smile, if you like to waltz with potatoes, up and down the produce aisle. <clears throat> Excuse me, have we got a show for you? Broccoli, celery, gotta be vegetables. Can you please hurry up? Be loved. Let us love one another. Let us love. Let us love. Friend, mother, sister, father, other. Let us love one another. Hmm. You gonna ask me why I'm dressed as lettuce? Let us. Beloved, let us love one another. Not let us. First John 4, 7. Oh, but if I were a lettuce, I would still love you, even though you're a tomato. Because I love you, bro. I appreciate that. I love you too, uh, bro. So I was thinking, for this show, Let Us Love One Another, we can show the kids five different ways we can love one another. Oh, okay. Well, I was kind of thinking we could show a few favorite VeggieTales episodes about loving one another. Well... Maybe we could do both, because I've been learning how to animate. You know what animation is, right? I believe I'm familiar with the concept. You want to go first? Why don't you go ahead? <laughs> That's a lettuce joke, isn't it? Go ahead. <laughs> uh -huh. Good one. Roll film! Let us love one another. Forgiveness. Once upon a time, a king had a servant who owed him 10,000 bags of gold. So, servant, where are those 10,000 bags of gold you owe me? Since the servant was unable to pay, the king ordered that the man must sell everything he had to repay the debt. Everything, including your family and all your tickets. Oh, king, please be patient with me. I beg, I'll pay back everything. The king took pity on him, canceled his debt, and let him go. Later, the servant found a fellow servant who owed him a hundred silver coins. Hey, you owe me a hundred silver coins. I don't have a hundred silver coins. Show me the money. Please, be patient with me. I'll, I'll pay you back. Just like the king forgave his servant, we show love to others when we forgive. When we don't, we're like the unmerciful servant. Don't be like the unmerciful servant. Yeah. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4.32 Let us love one another. Pray. Herod was a mean and nasty king who didn't like Jesus' followers. One day, 
he had one of Jesus' disciples, whose name was Peter, thrown into prison. No harmonica! While Peter was in prison, Peter's friends prayed for him. Dear Lord, we pray for our brother Peter. He's in jail, and he didn't do anything wrong. We ask that you free him from his cell. Suddenly, there was a bright light. Hey, Peter, quick, get up. And Peter's chains fell off. Follow me. No harmony. Sorry. Welcome, Peter. Come and our prayer. Just like Peter's friends, we show love to others when we pray for them. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. 1 Timothy 2.1 Let us love one another. Sherry! Once, Jesus was teaching a large group of people. Really large, actually. More than 5,000. You'll have to imagine there's a lot more. I just couldn't draw that many. Jesus wants us to feed all these people. There's got to be at least 10. 5,000. 5,000? There's got to be at least 5,000 people here. How are we supposed to do that? We don't have any food. Excuse me, little boy. Did you bring a little lunch there? Yes, sir. I have five loaves of bread and two fish. I'm a big eater, but I'll gladly share with you what I have. I'll be right back. The disciple went and told Jesus that a small boy with five loaves and two fishes had offered to share his lunch with the crowd. Thanks for offering to share, buddy, but uh, I don't think it's going to make much of a dent. Okay, we're all set. Jesus says we've got plenty. They gave thanks to God for the food, and the disciples passed around the bread and fish, and everybody ate as much as they wanted. There were even leftovers. You don't happen to have any doggy bags. Sorry, no doggy bags. Just like the little boy who shared his lunch, we show love to others when we share. And God can use us in big ways. Maybe tomorrow you could bring a few cheeseburgers and a burrito, taco salad. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Hebrews 13, 16. Let us love one another. Giving. Ouch. Once, there was a man robbed by bandits. He laid injured on the side of the road. I said, ouch. A Samaritan came along and took the man to where he could be taken care of. Ouch. The Samaritans gave some of his money to help care for the injured man. Here are two silver coins. Please take care of him. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay the rest the next time I'm here. Yeah, I've seen you here before. You're that Samaritan fella, right? The Good Samaritan! Ouch! Just like the Good Samaritan, we can show love to others when we give. In everything I showed you, that by working hard in this manner, you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts 20.35 let us love one another. Helping. One day, Jesus was teaching in a house by the Sea of Galilee. A group of men carried their friend who could not walk to the house. We're going to get you in to see Jesus, Barney. He can do miracles. He'll help you walk. Really? Well, thanks for helping, guys. You're awesome friends. But the crowd was too big, and they couldn't get in the house to see Jesus. There's no way in. Then one of them had an idea. Maybe there it is. What's up, guys? Is Jesus in the tree? Nope. You'll see. Is Jesus in the attic? Nope. You'll see. You don't have to go to all this trouble on my account, guys. Happy to do it, Barney. You're our friend. So they lowered him through the roof and into the middle of the house and right in front of Jesus. And you know what? Jesus healed their friend. Yeah! Oh, 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 yeah! Oh, yeah! Thanks for helping me, guys. Look at me. <laughs> Just like the men who brought their friend to Jesus, we show love to others when we help them. I'm okay! Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Philippians 2.4 Beloved, 
Let us love one another. Let us love, let us love. Grandmother, sister, father, other. Let us love one another. Nice, brother. Thanks, Bob. Those are some of my favorite Veggie Tales episodes. Great picks. Thanks, Larry. And nice job on your stories, too. Let's see if Gordy has a verse for us today. And so what we have learned applies to all our lives today. God has a lot to say in this oh, book. You okay? Cumbersome. Cucumbersome. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. And now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. 1 John 4, 7. And there are lots of ways we can show love to one another. Helping, forgiving, sharing, praying for each other, or simply reminding people that you love them by telling them, I love you. Love you too, bro. Because God loves us, he wants us to love others too. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Always remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Bye! Whoa. Let us get out of this suit. There we have it. I hope you liked uh, this video and I hope you got something out of it. Uh, please remember to join us this week. It's a holy week coming up. And remember the greatest moment.